All right, it's episode three of me literally just trying to get my chess.com rapid rating as high as possible because I've realized, whoa, this is way lower than it should be. Now, just to preface, I have no idea what my opponent's rating is because I'm in focus mode because it makes it way easier to um, have it look semi-decent on the screen. We have the Sicilian, and if you've watched the channel, you know, you know what I'm going to play. It's the A3 Sicilian, baby. And D6 doesn't really challenge it. It's, I mean, it's a fine move. Um, Knight C6 and E6 are the main moves. But this is fine. We can't go for the Gambit line anymore. But I've got loads of videos um, going over the A3 Sicilian. And this looks like it's going to be fun. Because the point is, we get insane control over D5. Do you guys know at this point, we control the d5 square, bishop drops back to a2. If a if e6 is played, we get a bishop out to g5 to pin the knight, to stop the knight from defending d5. g6 is a good move. And I'm just trying to remember what I should play. Um, We could drop the bishop back... But because e6 isn't on the board, d5 isn't a problem. The reason the bishop tucks in is so that d5 in the future doesn't come with tempo. But because he doesn't have an pawn on e6, that's not really a problem. So, bishop g5 is tempting. h6. We can actually take. And then put a knight on d5. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. So bishop g7 is kind of forced. I mean, he could play e6, yeah. We were actually threatening to take to make the e d5 square very weak so that e6 wouldn't be able to be played. f4 looks tempting here. But I kind of want to go knight to e2 first. Queen d2 is interesting, but I'm not really looking to trade the bishops right now. Just because it, I want to develop first. I want to get my king safe, get developed, and then we can look to attack. Castle kingside. The king wants to go to h1 most of the time, so that f4 can be played without this diagonal being weak. Because the idea is f4, f5 a lot of the time, which is part of the reason the knight goes to e2 rather than f3, where it would block the pawn. Okay, e6. This knight is now pinned, and we drop the bishop back to a2. E6, you basically always meet with bishop a2, just so d5 never comes with tempo. He can't play d5 anyway, because like I said, the knight is pinned, so that isn't a problem. But it's just a good habit. The bishop's very, very safe on a2. And it can always go to b3 if I need to defend some pawns, like defend c2, or block a queen, or something. Okay, this is common. Knight d4. Something tells me this is incorrect, though. Hmm. So a lot of the time, the knight is on f3, and then you drop this knight to e2 so you can play c3. I don't have the luxury of doing that, because I already have a knight here. So, that's one thing. We could play f4, looking to play e5. And then if he takes us, we're happy. Probably take back with the knight. Again, d5 is not a move. f4 is also nice, because if h6, bishop h4, g5 isn't playable. So let's go. Let's go with f4. I like that. E5 isn't necessarily going to win a piece, but it could cause some problems for black. Okay, E5. Unexpected, honestly. Wait, what? Takes. Takes. Knight E5. Is this knight not just lost? I'm pretty sure this knight's just dead. Knight d5, surely. Knight can't take because of the pin. We have three attackers now because the rook is opened up. He has two defenders. 
and he can't add a third. He can't add a third defender because he has no dark squared bishop. Sorry, what am I on about? Has no dark squared bishop. Yes, he does. But the dark squared bishop's already defending. This knight can't come to the defense, and a rook can't come to the defense. Obviously, the light squared bishop can't because it's on light squares. This looks like it should be completely winning. And the A3 Sicilian strikes again. You gotta love it. If you haven't played it already, then what are you doing? Firstly, firstly, I have a playlist with every game on my channel, including the A3 Sicilian, because I love it so much. And you should definitely watch it because, I mean, look what it's doing to this guy. Again, wait, I'm actually gonna look to see what his ELO is. Don't worry, it's just gonna mess up the board for a second. 1725. I mean, you guys already know that because I've edited it in, but 1725. If you guys, I mean, mo mo most of you guys are under 1700 ELO because, you know, it's just statistics, right? Most chess players are probably under like 1300, I'd guess. I tend to play at about 2000 level, hence why I'm trying to improve my rapid rating because it's way too low for me. But. They're literally falling for these things, and the A3 Sicilian is working against it. So, how are we going to do this? I want to take with the bishop. Queen A5 doesn't threaten anything. Let's just take. Now, we need to take, because otherwise he can move the knight. And I prefer, you know, you might think taking with the knight is better, because it comes with check. But knight takes king h8. Black's okay. I want to trade the dark squared bishops off to, so I can take advantage of these weak dark squares. Now I take with the knight. And then I'm going to take this knight. Just for simplicity's sake. Because we're up a piece. Let's trade. We can probably drop the knight back here. We could maybe go queen f3. To try and get into f6. There's loads of options. I mean, we're up a piece. This bishop is still putting in some good work looking at f7. Because the rook and the bishop could align on f7 once this knight moves. And tie our opponent's rook down to the defense. I don't really know why my opponent's thinking so hard. I'm surprised he hasn't resigned, to be honest. But we still need to be somewhat clinical. Now, what is going in our favor right now? is that we're up a piece, obviously, but our pieces are so much better than our opponent's pieces. Like, we just traded off our opponent's most active piece, and this bishop's a monster, this knight is a monster, this rook is fantastic. These pieces aren't doing anything for our opponent. You could argue his queen is active, because it looks active, but it's not actually doing anything. It's just staring at nothing. I have a feeling our opponent's trying to just time us out here. Um, so he's not he's just not moving. I'm going to edit out this bit because he's just taking forever. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, our opponent did abandon the game as expected. So let's just quickly go over the game. 92.3% accuracy, but we did win in 15 moves, so you know, that's not that impressive. But let's go over the game nonetheless. So we have the A3 Sicilian. Knight C3, Bishop C4. This is all standard. This is the standard setup of the A3 Sicilian, if the opponent doesn't go into the gambit line. Bishop g5, I really like this move, because <clears throat> my idea was if h6 is played, and I can trade, and I can put a knight on d5, maybe not straight away, but this is very ugly. My opponent's got the bishop pair, but this bishop, it's not that, it's not that impressive. Sure, maybe you can go to g7 and play f5, but h4, h5 is going to exploit this pawn quite severely h5 might need to be played by my opponent 
and <clears throat> I can probably go like queen d2, queenside castle. This position is far easier to play with white, in my opinion. So, this is all standard development. Bishop to a2. It's interesting the computer believes this position is better for black, because practically speaking, it looks far easier for the white pieces. But it's also kind of a good thing that the computer isn't a massive fan of the opening, because it means that black players, as in, like, Sicilian players, not the race, obviously, <laughs> um, it, it, it means that people are less likely to actually look at this opening with much, like, seriousness, because they're more likely to think, ah, this is... This is nothing to be worried about, the A3 Sicilian, because computer says minus 0.4 for black, so we don't have to study this, let's just go study another knight offline. Like, that's all well and good, but I play this opening all the time, and so I'm more likely to be able to get something out of it. So, don't worry about the computer evaluation too much. And, you know, my opponent clearly doesn't understand the opening properly, because this isn't this isn't really a move unless the bishop actually defends the knight and the knight is on e7. That's that's a far better setup for black. Uh, but knight f6 looks more natural, which is why it's played. And I didn't really want to take because after c takes knight e2, I thought my opponent could glue the center shut with something like e5. Computer likes this idea which makes sense, but I don't know, I, I wasn't really a fan of this, so instead I went f4, and if my opponent takes me, I'm just going to take back with the, well, the knight or the queen. Computer really prefers the queen, maybe because it supports e5 a bit better, and doesn't leave b2 vulnerable, but knight, knight takes is fine, um, you can play a move like c3, and shore the center up. Maybe not here because of queen b6 ideas, but king h1, I don't know, a6, c3. Something like this looks quite good for me. I mean, here we just win a piece, but you get my point. So, let's just go back. E f yeah, e5 is played, and this just loses a piece straight up. There's no question about it, and... My idea from here was after c takes, which makes far more sense. I want to play queen f3, move this knight, and then get into f6 with my queen. So say bishop e6, um, I can play a move knight h5? I was going to play knight g4, uh, realistically. And if my opponent does something like this, whoa. Then this is mate. And so he has to take the knight with the bishop. And then I take back. And then I'm just up. Again, I've traded another set of pieces. And I'm just going to bring my queen straight back to f3. In all likelihood. To try and continue the pressure. My opponent can try and defend. But bishop b3 shores up the queen side. This is very easy to play with the white pieces. And obviously it's completely winning. But... Yeah, 15 move win against, <clears throat> you know, realistically a fairly strong opponent. Most of you guys would probably lose to them, just brutally honest. And the A3 Sicilian absolutely destroys them. So our rapid rating continues to rise. We're getting closer to 1800. I'd like to get to at least 2000, maybe even go higher. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, just feed my ego a little bit. And if you haven't checked out my other A3 Sicilian videos, please do so. I hope you find it useful and have success in the opening because, you know, I couldn't recommend it enough. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it educational at the very least. And I'll see you in the next one.